I'm ready to continue talking about Ferengis and their large ears. Not not on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the VGU TV Gamer Cast, the official gaming podcast of VGU TV. Um, I'm your host, Joshua Mobley. It has been a long time. It's been way too long. So much like busy stuff going on. But uh, we're back. We're on iTunes now, thanks to uh, Alan Muir, who's on the show uh, this fine afternoon. And uh, we also got James Pangello. Hello. We got Chris Herb is also here with us. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, how you, how how is everybody? How's, uh, I don't know what it's like for you guys <clears throat> right now, uh, but it is a beautiful day in Northern California. Screw it's you, it's kind of raining. It's raining. Yeah, it's kind of mucky and stuff. Well, actually, it was like half and half. The first half of the day was rainy and nasty, and the second half was sunny, but it was still kind of like you know everything was still muddy and all that stuff. And I picked the I went out for a run at noon, and I picked the worst time because it was the only time it was actually raining after like it, it rained early morning, and then throughout the most of the morning it was fine. I go out there at noon, it immediately starts raining as soon as I get away from my house. So I like just all right, I just got to get through it, and I ran through the rain. Second, I got back to my house, it stopped raining. And then it hasn't rained since. So it just a cloud followed me. There you go. For that one thing. But yeah, that, that's been the weather here. Yeah, it's still gray up here. We're supposed to get scattered tea storms tomorrow. I think 60% chance mm. of showers. Jeebus. I hate rain. I love well, you rain. know what I hate more is cicadas. And I just found out that they're coming this year. Oh. And I'm petrified. And it's the big ones. And I'm petrified. Oh, man. I hate those things. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's see what's going on. Oh, uh, th- by the way, everyone, this is episode forty-seven, <clears throat> and uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep trucking along at this weird, erratic pace. I feel like until summer when I'll have way more time. But uh, let's see. Also, we have some cool stuff to announce soon, but not yet. Secrets. Give me to this. I mean secrets. We're gonna sell a calendar of Zach Davis, not <laughs> <laughs> wearing only a thong every single month. It's just a different. It's like him like spraying himself in water. 17. Yeah, he's a star too. One of him's like one of him's taking like a deep puff. Of like we should do it water. so it's like he just slowly moves in one direction, so you can like use like a flip book. It's just 12 <laughs> frames. So it's one second of motion. It's him like turning yeah. his head he, really he, fast. he just waves once. <laughs> Blinks. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Anyway, we're gonna, we're just gonna jump right into this. Uh, Chris, what have you been playing? Um, Star Trek Online, World of Tanks, nothing new really. I mean, I saw, I watched a, a stream, somebody play through the whole of Injustice and I want it really bad. Like really bad. Pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, oh, uh, Cold Fear, old horror game. Uh, it's, uh, you're on a boat. It's from PS2, Xbox era, I think, but it's on Steam, <clears throat> and it's it's all right. It glitches out graphically now and then, so all the color washes out, like all the textures disappear, and you're like, I don't know what to do. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a flashlight bug, but it usually resets itself after like going through a couple doors, so. It's frustrating. I had, I had I had to turn it down to easy because it is unforgiving. Like if if one of the uh, exo mutants or whatever the heck they call them, they're not zombies, guys. Uh, jumps you and grapples you, you're dead in like three seconds. It's it's brutal, but it's good. Interesting. Interesting. James, besides injustice, because we'll talk about okay. that in a second. All right. What have you been playing? Uh, well, I just I'm working on a uh, playthrough of Fallout New Vegas, Ooh. Um, which I started before um, Injustice came out. Um, I actually even started it before Bioshock came out, and then I had to stop it to play Bioshock. Um, so yeah, Fallout, and then obviously as I just kind of said there, Bioshock Infinite. I played through that. <clears throat> I actually haven't picked it up since I beat it though. I guess because the injustice came out and I wanted to keep yeah. going with Fallout. Yeah, I'm, I mean, me too. I, I I know a lot of people were like, I'm going to go through my second playthrough. And I was like, I'll wait. You know, I I played it and, uh, and I know one day I'll be like, I really got to go back. But for now, I'm just, I'm good. 
it's one of those th- it's one of those kind of weird in between games where like you know a game like Fallout it's for me it's you have to jump in and then you have your playthrough and that's what you do with your basically with your life while you're playing that game <laughs> and then um with a game like say like some shooter games like say Halo or Gears I'll jump into levels and just play a level or something like there's a ton of the levels in Gears of War that I just absolutely love especially like the you know uh the one I think in Gears 3 where like you're uh, protecting the fort from the locust I love playing that I'll play it over and over so like you know there's that but Bioshock because it's you know it's not a level based uh story game and it's not as deep as Fallout in terms of like you know well, there's 150 hours of content there um, you know, it, it's something that I kind of feel like I'm not going to jump back into anytime soon until I want to play the whole thing again. And it's going to be a while before I want to play the whole thing again. Like, yeah. if Gears was like that, I wouldn't play it as often because I wouldn't want to jump back in and play the entire game. When I just they, get when they announce uh, Bioshock <clears throat> Finite. <laughs> Bioshock <laughs> Finite. <laughs> Bioshock Limited. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, I, I'm... Can I can I say something? I love Bioshock. I don't want any more of them. You don't want any more Bioshock games? No. It had a good run. Let it let it let it be. You know, as the Beatles said. <laughs> if we do get another one, it's probably going to be a while. I don't think they're going to pull a Bioshock. Yeah, us. but at the same time, like without spoiling anything, not going to spoil anything. Doesn't the ending though just kind of feel? <laughs> it to me, it feels like the culmination of an entire series. Like, if they had made a bunch of games that were all different, and then this was the last one, don't you think it would have been, like, hit you way harder? I could, uh, I could see that. But, yeah. like, again, I don't think he'll touch the property for a while, one way or the other. The thing about Bioshock for me is that the games, the first two games, and the third game, while they do share a common universe, and there are some slight references... Um, which I'm not going to spoil, but there are some slight references to the first two games uh, towards the end. It it so seems so disjointed to me uh, that you know it's because like you know you get ha- like say Halo right Halo Halo one two and three and then Halo four and you know even into there it's all just one continuous story. You got the same characters, you got the same stuff going on. Bioshock, you know, one and two are obviously linked pretty you know relatively closely. You're at least at least the same setting. Bioshock Infinite's a totally different setting. It feels like a completely different game in a lot of ways. Like a lot of yeah. the mechanics are the same, but it's set, you know, a couple a couple decades before the the um the other two. It's set in a completely different place. And also the ending that they put in place was kind of like, you know, it was it was an ending. So it to me it just that seems kind of weird. It's kind of like where are they going to go with it from here because, you know, they they've obviously decided that they didn't want to go back to Rapture. But not going back to Rapture also kind of just opened it up to, well, it's now it's kind of, you know, we call it Bioshock because it has the same mechanics and it's technically the same universe, but they all kind of seem like different experiences. So it, I still kind of wish that we could play the Bioshock Infinite multiplayer. That never was. That's just me. I know people are like, it didn't need multiplayer. And I'm like, you're right, it didn't. But I would have liked to have it. <laughs> like, I like Bioshock 2's multiplayer. I think it's fun. But Mass Effect 3 didn't need multiplayer, but you know the multiplayer was fun enough. Yeah. And it didn't really impede on the the thing. Like it, there was so much fighting over if it was actually gonna matter in the game. And yeah. then when you actually play it, you're like, no, you can get the ending. Well, you can get the one ending. Um, <laughs> you can get that one ending regardless of what you do. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah, multiplayer is like just optional, you know. Yeah, <clears throat> Alan, what did you yes. play? I recently I played a lot this week. Played Defiance. Why? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I kind of. It's not that bad. I mean, is it? Well, <laughs> or are you just like trying to defend your investment? Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> <It's> just. <laughs> 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 It he's like, no, right. no, no. I, I just have this vision of him sitting on this cou- his couch. He's just like, no, 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 no. Yeah, no. This is this is good. This is fine. <laughs> like secretly <laughs> hating it, but like, no, no, no. It's good. It's good. It's good. I'm it's crying good, on the inside. It's a good game. It's not for everybody, but it's a good game. You know, it's not great. You know, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's it's a game. It's a it's game. A game. 
<laughs> if there's a word I could use other than mediocre, it, it'd probably be that. It's interactive. <laughs> yeah, it's interactive. <clears throat> well, it's like it's like par for the course. It's, it's like middle it's, of the road. It's like it's here. Just, it's just okay. <laughs> it's not the best MMO I have played. This exists. <laughs> this exists. <laughs> this happened. This, this happened a, to people. This is a thing. This think, happened. It's still happening. It's I, probably going to happen in the future. I think the concept of it is fucking really cool, but yeah, the game doesn't live up to the the concept. What were you playing it on? Out of curiosity. Uh, PS3. Okay. Yeah, I heard the PC one might be free. I'm not entirely sure about that, but uh, also no, they're, they're all. I, I thought so. I also heard it's going to be more directly tied or have more of an impact on the show, but again, that could also be false information because it was from the same source. Well, I uh, wrote an article for VGU. Okay. Discussing that. I will read um, it, and so should our listeners. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the since the season since season one is practically done, there's really nothing. There's gonna be no more interactions right now. Okay. But once season season two starts up, because it got renewed already, without e- after debuting like not even it's a week. Sci-fi ago. channel, they'll throw money yeah. at anything. Yeah, they threw money at paranormal or haunt paranormal collector. At Stonehenge Apocalypse. My yeah. personal favorite. I don't uh, even. But yeah, so so basically, what you're saying is that season two is going to really be where it kind of either like sinks or swims with the content, you know, back and forth between the game and the show, because that's when it's really going to kick in. Yeah, you know, like season after... one's already all finished, and they're not going to change the show, but they'll change. But they could, they're still writing season two. Yeah, like every every <clears> episode <throat> after every episode airs. There's gonna be like an internet, like an, a mission or two, and some other stuff. But once that, <laughs> but once the next episode airs, everything from the previous week just goes away, gone for good. That's so any bad. of that, like mission stuff or anything, is just gone. Yeah. So if you only do, you can only do it at mm. the, for a limited time. You see, one of the problems that I have with that, I mean, obviously, not just from you know you, the common sense thing is like, why are you just erasing content? But really, the, the main problem is that. If this had happened, if the, if this had happened, I don't know if they did this with a game. I don't see how they could have, but let's just say they did it with a game. They 10, do 15, with MMOs, 10, 10, 15 so. years ago. Ten, fifteen years ago, they had done this. All right, um, you know that wouldn't be that big. That wouldn't be that big of a deal because people still watch TV when it was on TV. But now people watch episodes of shows whenever they want to on their other devices so frequently that you know you might not get around to it that week. And then that just kills your interactivity. If you can't get access access to the next week, sometimes people have a backlog of TV shows. Like, oh yeah, well I have missed it for a few weeks because I was busy, and now I'm going to watch three uh, three episodes on Hulu Plus or whatever because I paid for a subscription, you know, and things like that. That so that I think is a little bit more of a problem nowadays than it would have been in the past with people like that. But I don't know. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people are know how about extensive. This. Well, I mean, MMOs have always like had content that goes away. So, I mean, they they have events that happen in the world that kind of are supposed to tie into this overarching plot. And after like it's done, I mean, that's it. They go away. But I I understand that. But I think it's it's weird because this game is tied into something else. So it's like if you're trying to like come in. Let's say God knows fucking why. Like I would, co- I would come in during season two, and I couldn't play any of that weird, you know, that all, all that other stuff that happened during season one, like when it was going on in the game. Like, am I missing something? Like, am I not going to get the whole plot? Like, there's a concern there. Where, whereas, you know, when you play something like World of Warcraft, like back in the day when they didn't even have the first expansion pack yet. They had this event where like there were there were like zombies and and they had these huge like ziggurats floating around the world and wherever they were like zombies would show up and they did that for like a like a month or two and then it, it's gone forever you know that was just like an event that happened and you can never do that ever again you know so I get that but I uh, this seems seems different you know I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. 
Well, how, how like dependent on? I'm asking Alan this, obviously, but how dependent um, is the interactive content to the experience? Like, if if someone just wanted to pick up the game and just play the game, would they really suffer because they didn't watch the show, or vice versa? Uh, no, there are tons of people on uh, Twitter just saying how much they love the show and had clear had no clear indica- indication that there's a game as well. Okay, so it is that that's definitely a pet peeve of mine is when they take important plot points or they take things that are necessary and they add them into other media cuz I don't mind having, you know, like say Mass Effect. I don't have having fine mind having Mass Effect novels or something or Mass Effect, you know, whatever. Um but when I'm playing the games, I want to be able to play the games and understand everything without having to know the backstory of the novels cuz I don't want I don't like pre prerequisite reading for my video games. And it's kind of the same here. It's like, I, maybe I don't want to watch the show, or maybe I don't want to play the game, but I want to watch the show. But that seems well, to be good. Like, if yeah. that changed in the future, that would be a bit of a pain. Or at mm-hmm. least for me, that's a thought that's like, I wouldn't like that. Yeah. The game uh, takes place in San Francisco, while the um, TV show takes place in St. Louis. Okay. So oh, that everything... definitely helps. Yeah, so... Break stuff. Every... The game, or from what I'm guessing... Season, this season, everything will mainly be about the connection between the game and the show will mainly be like backstory. Mm-hmm. Because okay. you, you see them, you meet them early on, and there are episode missions throughout uh, the game. Mm-hmm. But you can, you can actually play the game without even interacting with them. You just play through the main plot. Weird. And through the side missions. But, uh, but oddly enough, the side missions are 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 <clears throat> extremely repetitive, and I mean, with so- something like Star Wars: The Republic, it'd be very. Y- some side missions were better than main plot mm-hmm. missions. Hmm. This, the main plot uh, missions and the game mission and the side missions, are sort of they sort of. Um, Blur. So they're all bad. You mean like <laughs> you, you mean like in terms of they blur in terms of quality or in terms of you don't know what what's what. So, uh, blur in terms of confusion. Okay, so you're not sure if it's this. So is you just quest. don't know what's I don't know, going I don't know on. I'm doing a side quest. Because there have yes, been a sir. few times, like I remember in Tomb Raider when I was playing through that, I raided two tombs thinking that I was doing the main quest. Nope. And then I realized <laughs> it's optional. I don't have to do this. Yeah, I so did. So that happened a few times in Tomb Raider. So you did something like that where you just end up doing a side mission. Like, oh, wait, I didn't know that was a side mission. Well, no, they're pretty much... Um, the map pretty much indicates which is which. Okay. So, like, there was a, a giant uh, marker that shows main plot mission. And there are just these little exclamation points for the side missions. But like the the enemies in the game are ma- are mainly mutants, which this game confuses even... the fuck out of me. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's it sounds like it sounds like it should be Fallout Online. But, How which... great would Fallout Online be? Let's just talk about that. Uh, no, no, I, I, it's the same thing with Knights of the Old Republic. I don't want an MMO. Give me my. I want my Kotor three. You haven't played a good MMO, and Fallout you haven't played 4. one with people. But I don't. I have a laptop that I bought specifically just to write, you know, to write stuff on with word processing and to go on the internet. Bitch, you can play. I, it's you not can a still... gaming laptop. It's not meant to be. I don't want to. No, change no, 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 no. Hey, like hey, hey. Xbox. Listen to me. Listen to me. You can still play DC Online. They have a. They have it on PS3. It's free. You just download it and play it. Well, you wait a couple days for it to download. Well, you wait a couple yeah. days yeah. because yeah. it's oh, like 18 ever. gigs. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, when I re-downloaded uh, Old Republic, it took eight hours on a direct line <laughs> to, re- <laughs> to get re-downloaded. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like I, That's why I like, you know, in WoW, it's like once it's only partially downloaded, I can just stream the rest of it. And it'll download, like, while I'm streaming. But anyway. But originally there was a Fallout MMO. But... Canceled, right? It wasn't yeah. Black Isle trying to do it. 
No, uh, it, no was, uh, it was Interplay was making oh, Interplay. it. And then right. like Bethesda sued them because they weren't doing it or something. Or no, Bethesda it, it, it sued was... them because they weren't allowed. They were only allowed to use Fallout, not a single thing else. They could, weren't allowed to use, interact with the lore, use any characters that weren't previous they games. They could even use the Pip Boy. Yeah, and the page. So what? Have, what the point? The page for the MMO was basically sprawled, like just covered with things from the games, like Harold, uh, the Master Lives. It it was just a clear violation of everything Bethesda said. Hmm. Which just seems kind of weird because it's like you know okay well let's use a name. But none of the universe. It's like, well, so then what's the <laughs> so point? So none of the universe. So like, what's the point? Like, okay, like, it's like, it's, it's like, if, you know, like, you can use the name Mass Effect, you can call it Mass Effect 4. Well. But you can't have Mass Relays, you can't have Reapers, you can't have Shepard, you can't have the Alliance, you can't have, uh, you know, you can't have the Turians, Asari, or, so, so what's the point? It's not no, Mass No, I think Effect it anymore. was just like, they couldn't use anything from like, previous games, because, Fallout 3 is loosely tied into Fallout 2, and New Vegas is loosely tied into Fallout 1. But, like, I I think what they wanted was that this MMO wouldn't be, like, oh, you can't say... Let's let's take this for instance. So, like, like the Master is the last boss in Fallout 1. They're like, oh, you can make a Fallout <laughs> game, but you're not allowed to connect it to Fallout 1 because now mm-hmm. we own the license for that and we don't want you to do that because, you know, maybe Bethesda is most likely, I, I, I'm i sure, they're working on another Fallout game. Uh, oh, they definitely are. Um, what if that's one of their plot points? You know, they don't want the universe to get all messed up. They don't want Interplay to be like, we made this MMO where this one character's alive even though you're going to kill him off in the Bethesda one. Then it gets confused, you know, it gets confusing. So well, maybe they, they were just like, really shouldn't let them do a game with the name. It just doesn't make sense to even have thought of letting them do a game though. with the name. And then the things like, like the Pip-Boy, which they wouldn't even be able to use, the name the Pip-Boy. Yeah, but it wasn't I called, mean, so like, there's it wasn't a lot of little... the, it wasn't called the Pit Boy in the first Fallout game, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember what it was called. Was it not? No, it was called something else. Um, it, it the character looked kind of the same, except he looked like a superhero and not like a vault dweller. But, uh, I don't remember what they, I don't remember what it was called, to be honest. Um, I, I haven't played Fallout 1 in, in years, so. But, uh, <sighs> Yeah, we should keep moving on with this. Uh, what are you playing? So yeah, so I've been also playing Syndicate. Jesus, why? <laughs> <laughs> the God, new yeah. one? Seriously? Yeah. <sighs> I, I, I You're like killing me, game. Alan. <laughs> or man, this is this is exactly how it is on the DualShock show. I say and they I say a game. Matt and Tom are like, seriously? Why are you trying to kill your PS3? Your PS3 is just gonna like blow its brains out one day. <laughs> like I can't take it anymore. <sighs> I don't know, man. You're crazy. Ew. Anyway, uh, but I did play Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. That's a good game. Finally, finally, you played kind of something of good. <laughs> 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 that's the that's some good old like Lucas Arts point and click adventure stuff right there. You know, back in the day. Yeah, I, I've only played like about five, ten minutes. Yeah, it's it reminds me it reminds me exactly of um, Tomb Raider, in that that Indy cannot catch a break. <laughs> He's just no. falling down over things, getting crushed by bookcases. Yeah, it's true. It's true, but it's Indy, man. Yeah, you shoot a guy with a sword and. Bang a chick on a Nazi boat and feed dates to a monkey and then the monkey dies and they're like, well, you know, I guess it's poisonous dates, you know. <laughs> I'm making some, str- like, some crazy throwbacks to Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> it's the perfect movie. I don't care who you are. I don't care what I'm you I'm not say. disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing. It's, it's a perfect movie. It has everything you'd ever wanted. It's got comedy. It's got adventure. It's got action, blood, it's got Nazis, romance, Nazis. It's got a freaking monkey in it. You know, like it's got everything. Shock. 
<laughs> Start the engine. <laughs> anyway, I'll tell I'll talk about what I've been playing because we we need to get this show rolling. We need to get this uh, butter this ball up. Let's get it going. But anyway, um, I played some Disc Gaia, the PS Vita one, and as soon as I got to the battle system, I was like, I'm good. I don't really want to play this anymore. <laughs> Had you ever played any of the earlier ones? No. Um, uh, okay, yeah. Like, the I dialogue, I was like, this is funny, like, this is charming, and then when I got to the combat, I was like, the, you know, I wasn't feeling it. I don't know. So I just deleted it. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I got it for free anyway, so I was like, this isn't my thing. Uh, I've been playing more Final Fantasy VI. I have no idea where to go. Like, the whole world opened up, and I don't know where I'm supposed to go. What was the last major event that happened? Uh, I might be able to remember this. I went back to the castle where, you know, the brothers, like the prince and what's his face, and they talk about, like, their parents, and they flip the coin, and, and then I left. But now I have no idea where to go. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you have to go to the one island and find Gao? I don't, or do you have to go I to find Cyan? I already found Gao. You got Gao, behind. okay. Can I you find Cyan? Terra turned into like the weird glowy thing and flew away. And they're like, oh, we need to go find her. And then it's just like, I don't know where to go. I would just revisit every town ever. And I think, have you hung out with General Leo yet? I don't know. Probably not then. He, he should pop up somewhere. I don't know. Check Resistance Headquarters or something. I, I, it's been so long. I went to Resistance Headquarters and okay. like everyone's just like, Oh man, welcome back. I'm glad you're safe. It's like, God damn it. Like, I don't know where to go. Yeah. I would just check everything. <laughs> uh, that's, it's terrible. I'm like but, walking but I over the remember. entire world. Just like, uh, where do I go? <laughs> um, and then. I have been playing Injustice, Gods Among Us, of course. And I know James has, too. James reviewed it. Mm-hmm. So, Injustice, Gods Among Us, DC fighting game, make us a Mortal Kombat. If you don't know anything about it, you've been living under a rock. Because it had a bit of hype behind it. It's Just pretty, a little. It's a, it's a pretty good game. Pretty good Just game. A Judging by James's, James' score, it's a pretty good game. Yeah. Gave, good. It a, gave it a B. Now, why, why did, why, what, what held you back from the A, or did you just feel like it was a B? There, well, there were a couple of things. One was definitely because when I give something, I mean, because an A is essentially like an, uh, I think on our scale, an A, because it's not an A minus, because we have an A minus on the scale, so. I just thought A, a plus like a was five. like. And A plus is like a 10, and A is like a 9.5. Mm-hmm. If I give something a 9.5, or even a 9, there has to be something a little extra that made me like go, oh wow, yeah. And that never really happened. Like there was a lot of stuff that I thought was very cool and very well done, but that kind of oh wow factor wasn't there. And more, in more of a tangible argument is that a lot of those combos and special moves are kind of wonky and they're hard to pull off. Not all of them, um, but there's definitely times. And I use multiple controllers, so I'm convinced that this is the game and not. You know, me using a ratty controller. No, it's true. You know, where I go back and forth, you know, it's, it's, you know, left, right, left, right, Y to do something, and I press that, and it doesn't work. And, uh, it, which, and I press it ten times, and it doesn't work. Which system and I'll are you use on? Xbox. Uh, yeah, I've heard there's, uh, there are control issues with the Xbox. It is not just you. Right. It is the so, game. So, yeah, exactly. And, um, well, thank you. But yes, you know, exactly. I, yeah, I, I, I haven't kind of had control issues, issues like and that's that. A, I've just found and, like certain combos are harder to do. Yeah, well, like there's that, and then there's also the whole um, like is I, I was I was saying um, I think it was before the show. I don't think we got this on air. The like I was doing the just regular combos, not like you know a special move, but just the combos, like you know press X X Y to do this combo or whatever, and it wasn't registering correctly. I'd press X X Y, didn't work. I'd press X, X, Y really fast. Didn't work because it didn't register the second tap of the X. I did it slower. Didn't work because it didn't register as a combo. And I was doing tutorials, and it was taking like 20 minutes to get through some of these things. I had to start. I started skipping tutorials because I can't even do this move. And it was just kind of frustrating. So those little things were enough of a nuisance to say that, okay, this game is not like really incredibly great. But having said all of that really negative stuff, there is a ton of phenomenal stuff about the game, which definitely keeps it from being like a C or below. It's definitely 
a good game that's worth checking out because the interactivity, the dynamic backgrounds, the character models, the story itself, all of that stuff is really great. And it's, you know, it's, it really makes it stand out as a fighting game. So there's a lot to weigh back and forth. I just kind of feel like, you know, a B, which is like, you know, it's above average. It's good. It's like an eight, eight, five, I think is what I'd give it if I gave it a, uh, a number score. So, you know, it's a good game, but you know, it's not a great game. Yeah. The story is awesome <laughs> though. Story is very good. I remember yeah. someone likened it to like a good episode of like Justice League Unlimited. They, yeah, they did. do a good episode of Justice League Unlimited like that. Oh, they did a movie. They did, they movie. did um, they did a movie. With, they did a couple of different ones. But well, there was I think an the one with, with the parallel universe. It was with, like uh, Earth like Two or whatever or something, no, no, which no, is no. a little bit different than this. But the um, the there was an episode where the Flash died <clears throat> in one universe and they became the <clears throat> injusti- the Justice Lords. Right. And they essentially did the same thing. Yeah, oh, but wait, then that's they right. did okay, a, that's right. but they did the a episode, movie, the movie like based on that. No, kind but of. the movie was a bit di- the movie was a bit different though because they had like Ultraman instead of like Superman. It was so instead, instead of, of instead of there being an event that changed them, it was just that the heroes in this universe were always bad. Yeah, so the movie then, was was that like that. The game was more like the episode where there was an event that turned them kind of bad instead of them always being bad. Josh, you're thinking of. Uh... Justice League Crisis on Two Worlds, where it was yeah. like the Earth uh, One and Earth Three. Yeah. Justice yeah. League and the Crime Syndicate. James Woods yeah. was like uh, the the Night Owl he was, Batman. Yeah, he was Owl Man. Yeah, Owl Man. <laughs> Kicked the crud out of Batman in that last fight too. <laughs> yeah, they're on like some other planet. That's how. That's why comic yeah. books are cool. It's like two dudes dressed up in in like a bat and owl costume can beat the shit out of each other on the moon, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, this makes total sense. Woo! <laughs> I know. You're like, this is rad. <laughs> you don't even care. But um, yeah, I, I I'm enjoying the game. I like the Star Labs challenges. It reminds me of the the big tower from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Uh, which I enjoyed completing, but it was a pain in the ass, and I can tell this one's gonna be a pain in my ass also. Have you done the Batman ones yet? Like, especially the <sighs> Some one with of the them. I don't like Batman. Not that like I don't Batman? like Batman, I don't like playing as Batman. Oh, you don't like the moves? I don't like how he works. Mm. Well, the reason I really enjoyed the Star Labs mission with, with Batman is because of all the different characters. Cause like they had like, they have like, you know, you have to apprehend different Arkham criminals and they had all the character models are basically for the Arkham villains are from Arkham City, which I love. Um, and the one with the scarecrow I thought was the coolest because I think you're fighting Raven uh, on the streets of like Metropolis or something. But like scarecrow's like in, like, you know, like shooting at his fear gas. So like the whole thing changes. And like the screen will tilt and you go into that kind of like weird fear thing with the Batman's got the glowing yellow eyes and stuff. I thought that was just so cool. And it was such a, it was like kind of like you have to beat Raven before, you know, that that world kind of takes over. And it, it, I just thought that that was really well done, the Star Lab stuff. So yeah. I enjoyed that. There was the one where you track down Killer Croc. Um, it's pretty cool. I still don't know how to go into the wager <laughs> system. Like I know how it works, but I, I don't know how to initiate it. I can't get that to work because I was doing the tutorial on that one, and they had a thing. It was like you know the, do the the wager block, and it was like um, it was like right trigger and like the towards or something, you know, so like you know, right or left or whatever towards your enemy. I kept doing that over and over, pressing that button combination. It just did not work. So I have absolutely no idea. I didn't finish that tutorial. Tutorial I skipped it. So the wager thing just pops up. And I usually just press whatever button I feel like pressing and then just see what happens. I usually lose them. Um, but whatever. Do you not understand how they work? Or do you I just... kind of get it. I do know that you're betting a certain amount of your meter. Yeah. Um, that you'll win the wager. So I do know, I, cause I initially thought that it was a thing where like, you know, the person presses a button and then if you press the exact same button or whatever, you know, not knowing then when you clash, You'll you'll win it and you'll get some bonus, but if you press the wrong button, they do some damage no, to you it's or something. Like, but that's not what it is. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. It's like if you initiate it, you're you're betting that I. It's like I have half super bar or whatever. I'll bet half my super bar against you, and then it's like if you, I mean, you don't know how much they're betting unless you know their bar is not full. Then you're like, well, they're probably gonna, you know, you, there's a way to automatically beat them. But you're saying like I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna like bet this, 
And then if I win, you know, then I get like tw- it's like 25% of my health back or something like that. <clears throat> and then the other person might want to like bet against you. You know, because they might not want you to get 25% of your health back, but then again, they might not want to lose all of their super. So they might just lose it on purpose. Mm -hmm. Or they'll be like, no, fuck you. I don't want you to get 25% of the health back. Or they just can't get it back. You know, it's interesting, but I don't, I still don't know how to get it. It seems a bit convoluted though. I just today figured out how to knock people into other parts of the level. Yeah, yeah, if you don't do the tutorials, and my problem is that when I booted up the game, my Xbox decided to be a, a bitch and not play any, no, any, um, audio. So, it wasn't playing any audio, um, through all of the screens, and then I got to the tutorials, it was totally silent, and I'm like, something's wrong with this, this isn't right. So I turned the Xbox off, turn it back on again, and, um, the, uh, so, you know, the sound obviously comes on, mm-hmm. and it's like normal. And then I go through, and then it's like, you know, and now I've gone past the tutorials, and I just go and press single player. And then I just jumped into the game. I figured out interactive objects, and I figured out transitions. All of that stuff, I didn't know how to do until after I'd already beaten the whole game. I played the whole game, <laughs> not knowing how to do that. Jesus. And then, I, and then when I played the extra, like like when I went back and just played, you know, other mission, either the Star Labs missions yeah. or just the battle stuff or went online... Then I was like, oh, maybe I should go back to the tutorials and take a look at how to use the interactive objects and stuff. Because I was just getting whipped back and forth by people using those, and I couldn't use them. We kind of have as easy as pressing right bumper, but <laughs> we kind of have a pact. Because when I when I when we first got the game, I went to uh, my friend's house, and there was a bunch of us there, and he has two fight sticks. So we were playing on fight sticks, and uh, like we didn't know we hadn't played the demo none of us had played the demo none of us had like really like done any of the research on it so we were all figuring it out and we kind of have this pact where if we're new in a fighting game and we're all playing together it's not like how'd you do that i'm not gonna tell you we don't do that because you know if you get like way better than everyone else it's not fun and if they are not as good as you or you're not as good as somebody and they're just like I'm not going to tell you how to do the supers. You know, it's not fun anymore. You know, you want it you yeah. want that like competitive kind of thing. So it's like once one somebody would be like, "Oh, you interact with stuff by pushing R1." And then you like like we just spread the information around. Cuz we yeah. we don't want it to be boring like one guy is just beating everyone <clears throat> over and over and over again. You want it to be interesting and we want everybody to learn like how to play. So it's like when I figured out how to do the super moves, I was like, "Everybody, it's R2 and L2." <laughs> <laughs> and after that, like we started the super moves are hilarious. Yes. I, oh, I love uh My god, they are phenomenal. My my favorite one's got to be Aquaman's. They're so funny. It's the freaking shark. Aquaman the shark, right? Yeah. 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 I didn't figure. Three out Lanterns to... is pretty good too. I couldn't figure out how to do the uh, super moves until I figured it out at the once again towards the end of the game. Not I actually did finish do it before I finished the whole game. But um, my favorites is pro- my favorite one is probably Batman's. Um, probably for no other reason than the fact that he's just so frantic when he's pressing the buttons. It's just so funny seeing, like, like yeah. he, cause he takes, like, two tasers and shocks the other guy, like, in the neck, and then he presses a bunch of buttons on his thing, he punches the guy, and then, like, jumps out of the way, and the Batmobile comes and smacks into the, yeah. uh, I think my the favorite, and my, it's funny. my favorite level transition has gotta be <clears throat> the watchtower when you, like, hit them out into space, and they, <laughs> they just go flying into space, and, and then, like, they get run yeah. over by some spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> and then it like seen, crashes. Oh, seen seen that one. One. And then yeah, it like no. crashes back into the watchtower. So funny. I was like, I was like, this is amazing. But, yeah, that's great. Anyway. I love the one in the in the city. I'll, I'll say I'll say this, and then we'll, for brevity's okay. sake, we will stop. But I do love it because the first time I had a level transition, it was I think it was Metropolis or somewhere. Um, but basically, it was the one where you on the street level, and then you get punched up to a roof. And I forgot who it was that I was fighting, but it was not like say it wasn't like Superman or somebody. It was like I think it was like Batman, maybe. Um, or it, it was some. It was one of the heroes who was like normal strength. Mm-hmm. And he punches me, and I go flying up like fifty stories. And I'm like, yeah, this seems legit. Like <laughs> Superman, it legit. makes sense. 
But I mean, no, yeah, you know what's why am funny? I still flying through levels? No, because they came up with building. that. They came up with that plot point to make like that makes sense. I thought that was super smart. The pills. Yeah, those, you, have this to was assume, very good. you have this to assume. You have to assume everybody's on those pills. <laughs> like, yeah, but th- this was before the pills, though. Oh, okay. It was before the steroids and the superhero in a <laughs> bottle. It was before that. Oh. Anyway, uh, it was very bonds with thing. the small head, not the big one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing in that game. I, I haven't even played it yet, but just seeing it, uh, the one level, it's not even a transition, but just the one level where the, the pig is on the meat hooks and you can smack it back and forth. Oh, yeah, oh, yes. I did that today. Yeah, I that's a good that. one. Also, I kind of like the dumpster that you can throw around on the streets, too. Yeah, that's yeah, Gotham. that one. That, that, yeah, that's Gotham, yeah. Um, last game I played, Guacamelee. Holy good choice. Holy <laughs> shit, Guacamelee is amazing. You can tell by the jump in Chris's voice. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a PS3 or a Vita and you don't have Guacamelee, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Fourteen ninety nine, eleven ninety nine for PlayStation Plus members. Go buy it. It's freaking Me. awesome. Game oh. rules. Too good. Especially if you like Metroid and Castlevania and stuff. It is. It's so good. It's it's Luchavania, as I like to call it. <laughs> anyway, moving on. It's the news. Yeah. Yeah, that's so enthusiastic. Woo. I don't know if they knew what Spring we were break. doing. Spring break. Spring break 2010. <laughs> Spring break 94. <laughs> you remember that on G4? <laughs> <laughs> the freaking campus police. Spring break. Twenty ten, like some shirtless guy. <laughs> the best part of that whole spring break thing, yeah, is yeah, that yeah. I went on a trip for spring break, and I did not. And it was it was so funny because of like you know you know all the people they go to wherever and they get blasted drunk and they have no shirts on and stuff. And I just went to like with a couple of my friends and we went to like a beach house, but they were all kind of nerdier guys, so they all just stayed in and played Minecraft. And that was basically my spring break, was sitting there watching them play Minecraft and then trying to turn the TV to the NCAA March Madness. While looking outside like, and going, wow, look at, yeah, look at looking that beach and all those half-naked like, yeah. women out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so tangent. Go to the news. All right, yeah, we're going to have to blaze through this news because I only have like half an hour before i got to go to work. So, <laughs> woo! Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. PlayStation Plus members get free Malicious. Never played it. Don't plan on playing it, but hey, it's free. Never uh, heard of it. Well, uh, it's probably a good thing. Anyway, um, and all of the Grand Theft Auto games on PSN are for sale. Um, I think, so the, the PS2 Classic GTA 3 is like five bucks. GTA San Andreas is like eight bucks. I don't know. I think Grand Theft Auto 4 and all the little expansions are on sale too, but I'm not a Grand Theft Auto guy anyway, so I couldn't. Uh, give... GTA 4 is uh, like 9.79. Ultimate yeah. Edition is 14.69. That's not bad. Yeah. And episodes from Li- Liberty City is 9.79. <clears throat> yeah, so I, I'm not even a Grand Theft Auto fan, but like 9.79 is like a good fucking price for. Vice City is the only one you need, really. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> even even that is like 4.89 for plus members and 6.99 for regular members. Do it. That's cheap, but if you don't already have it, I mean, come on. I mean, it's been out long enough. Also, Dungeon Fantasy Book One came out. Don't really know what that is, but I heard like I, I, I it. it's like an indie game. I think this news in, and you have no idea what it is. No, it's just, just it's part of the it story. Yeah, this is newsworthy. It's something I don't know about. It's part <laughs> of the story. Dungeon Fantasy sounds like the sort of website that's going to be not safe for work. I mean, I don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> No, it's that like a coming, showing up on like a credit card bill. You know? It's like an what eight. F- it's like an this? eight bit uh, RPG sort of. It's only Wait, like maybe I did see this. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I don't know much about it, but it's nine ninety nine. PlayStation Plus members can get it for seven ninety nine. It's cross buy also, <laughs> so you get the PS three and PS Vita version, and I assume Ooh. it's also uh, cross save. So that's kind of cool. I'll have to look into that. Um. Some a lot of DLC actually came out this week. Uh, most notably, the knife of Dunwall for Dishonor, wait, which got Josh. Reviewed. Are you talking about Dragon Fantasy book? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you said Dungeon Fantasy. He said Dungeon Fantasy. Oh, Dragon Fantasy. Sorry, I'm just fucking. 
Well, totally different connotation. Same now. shit. <laughs> Chris is like, oh, that game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Good, good, good pickup, Alan. Yeah. Anyway. Knife of Dunwall DLC came out. Uh, Xbox, PS3, PC. It's ten bucks, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken. Um, apparently it's freaking awesome. Yeah, it's getting it's about the, reviews. It's, it's about the, a third of the size of the entirety of Dishonored, which depending on how you play it, can be longer, short, <clears throat> like long or short. Yeah, uh, the review is up too. Yeah, and our yeah, review. Yeah, you have a review on our site. Review is yeah. on the a plus. What's that review? Jackson. Jackson. Okay, Jackson. Okay. Uh, Respawn still- Entertainment. Who were the guys that got, who were part of Infinity War, and then they had the whole lawsuit after Modern Warfare came out, and then they left, and their studio got bought by EA, uh, just mm-hmm. trademarked something called Titan. Uh, don't know what it is yet. Um, I'm gonna guess it's a shooter. There were, well, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, they, they teased with some blurry screenshots, and boy, they are blurry. Like, they're intentionally blurry, so it just looks like a bunch of blobs, and you're like, oh yeah, that gets me excited about your product. Yeah, I hate the really vague teasers, because it's like, really, what's the point? But now it's gonna be, it's gonna be confusing though, because Blizzard's next MMO is codenamed Titan. And there's the the video card called Titan, and... At least by the, at least by the press it is. My girlfriend, uh, went and visited the offices of Blizzard Entertainment, and she walked by the the room or the office section where they are developing Titan, quote unquote, and like you can't even see inside it. It's super blocked out. And the um, the guy she was with said, "Yeah, like most employees can't even go in there. Wow, it's so secretive." And uh, one of the programmers who's working on it now said that the he didn't know what he was going to be working on and he got the first day he went to work he still didn't know until the second day <laughs> then they told him what he and apparently they don't call it Titan so like the whole press has been calling it that they call it next gen MMO <clears throat> oh. so fun factoid it is that secretive that most of Blizzard doesn't even know what the fuck it is <laughs> World of Warcraft 2 no I'm kidding. <laughs> I doubt it. But uh, <laughs> World of Warcraft two. Anyway, World of Starcraft. I'd be down. I don't give a fuck. Mm. World of Diablo. Everybody be like, what? <laughs> 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 it's a Diablo RTS. It's like this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> anyway, uh, an analyst. <laughs> Um, from Cohen and Company estimates that God of War Ascension and Gears of War Judgment both sold far less than their predecessors, saying that Ascension most likely only sold 360,000 copies in the U.S. during March, and that Gears of War Judgment probably only sold 425,000. Wow. Down from well, I mean, it's it, not that much of a million. surprise, because they're both prequels. Yeah, they're and, also you know, both not kind of like... in the, you know... They're they're not in, they're not in like the um they're not no, you know numbered so they're not as big a deal you know kind it's of true. they're in the they're also they were also both in the the March um uh release window right they were both March yeah yeah uh, and the March release window lots is of not games. As, it, it had a lot of games but like I think a lot of people the big name stuff comes out around the holiday season yeah. Well, so a lot of the stuff that comes I mean there are obviously notable exceptions Mass Effect came out Mass Effect two <sighs> and three both came out early year. Mass Effect 2 was January, Mass Effect 3 was March. But, you know, obviously, there are obviously notable exceptions to that, but I think most people, the other Gears games all came out in, like, October. Um, you know, games like Halo and Call of Duty and Battlefield, the big, big ones, they all come out for the holiday season, so yeah. I think that might be part of it. Well, that and Tomb Raider, Bioshock Infinite, StarCraft Two: Heart of the Swarm, SimCity, all, like, all those games came out, and those are all big name titles. I'm not saying God of War and Gears aren't, <laughs> but... Yeah, that were that's like tons of big name titles in March, and they were all clumped together. So it's like not really surprising that most of those games didn't sell that well. Like Sim City sold really good, Starcraft Two: Heart of the Swarm obviously sold really good, <clears throat> and like Tomb Raider sold <clears throat> something like 
3.5 million copies worldwide. Bioshock. Yeah, which apparently isn't enough. Apparently isn't enough. <laughs> Fucking Square Enix, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> the stupidest motherfuckers, like, on, like, right now. I wrote a huge rant on VGU TV that you should go check out. It's called Square Enix, What Are You Doing? And, man, I, when I was writing that, I just felt like I had, like, Emperor Palpatine behind me, and he was just like, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Let, Let the hate, hate flow. flow. <laughs> <laughs> that was great, yeah. Anyway, um, we're getting into the Nintendo announcement. So, Nintendo Direct just happened. That's when Nintendo decides we're just going to blow out all our news right now. You know, at this, at this one event. And, uh, this was a 3DS, 3DS, 3DS focused, uh, Nintendo Direct. Um, first announcement, new Mario Party game coming to the 3DS in the winter. It's just called Mario Party. Meh. Nah. Jeez, alright. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Man, a little harder, like why don't you? <laughs> what? They haven't, they haven't been good, good since Mario Party 4, and even that is debatable. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, it. yeah. Put yeah. it down. Yeah. I don't know, whatever. The problem with this one, like, the, the thing about Mario Party is if you're playing on a TV, you know, everybody can play. But... If you're playing on a 3DS, like, everybody's gotta have Mario Party and everybody's gotta have a 3DS, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, that is mobile gaming, so. Let's see. Uh, new game announced called Mario and Luigi Dream Team. It's going to come out in July. Uh, it's an RPG. Uh, it takes place in Luigi's Dreams, giving Mario second banana something of a starring role. I don't know what that means. See, you're <laughs> Luigi, man. It Luigi's is. What the hell is up with Luigi? Why does everybody like him so much? I like because Luigi. He watches his weight. <laughs> so that's, that's no way to live. That is the way to live. No, that's no way to live. What? Being healthy? Fuck that. I'm, you know that's what? If When I die, I want a burger in my colon and grease in my veins. I don't give a damn. All right. It'll be like everybody, 15 everybody years just... from now. <laughs> Everybody just loves the wiggle jump from Mario 2, uh, the leg flailing. I gotta guess. be into that. Uh, Earthbound <laughs> coming to virtual console in North America and Europe fucking finally. But you know what they should yeah. do is just make a goddamn sequel. Well, they did, but they gotta, they gotta bring it out over here. But it, yeah, they, they you know There's what's weird? Earthbound is the second game in a trilogy and, and we only got that one. Isn't that yeah. it's like so weird. And people <clears throat> love that game. I that game was awesome. It was like yeah. a cool ass RPG. But yeah, coming to the Wii U Virtual Console later this year. All speaking of the virtual console, the Wii U Virtual Console is, comes out next week. Jesus Christ. I swear to God, like they they're just they're just like so behind on what their console should have been day one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh god, I haven't touched the Wii U in so long. I'm actually kind of feeling bad because my brother bought it for me, so I'm probably going to play a little bit of it tonight because I feel bad. <laughs> but go by there's nothing, there's cent. nothing for it. I've played there's more... nothing. For, I have three games. I've Madden, which I actually do prefer playing on on the Wii U. Um, but I, I got bought... New Super Mario Brothers, which I've never really been good at the Mario games, so I play through them, but I'm never good at them, so I don't go, get very far. And Nintendo Land, which is uh, honestly no fun if you're not. With somebody yeah, no, else. I no, myself, there's no, like, no, there's no point boring. of playing Nintendo Land by yourself. So, I mean, like, at least Wii Sports, which was, uh, they say Nintendo Land is the Wii Sports for the Wii U. At least Wii Sports was fun to play alone. I played bowling all night by myself. Ugh. I don't care. That was fun. Um, this, no. I don't want to play it by myself. Even though there are single player games, I don't want to do I it bought, myself, so. I bought, uh, Balloon Fight for 30 cents, like when it, when it came out. And that is the game I've played the most on the Wii U. <laughs> and I only played it once. So that shows you how much I've touched the Wii U. Nah. Yeah. Um, Animal Crossing 3DS XL coming to North America and Europe. Uh, looks kind of hipster. I do like Animal Crossing, though. Yes. Animal Crossing's rad. But it'll never be as good as the original. No, God, no. I fired up my original town a few weeks ago. And it was like, <laughs> weeds everywhere. <laughs> weeds everywhere, but my, one of my favorite neighbors who had disappeared into another person's town came back. I was so happy. He's like, Tangy, a, I missed you. He's I got a beard. You. He's like, where have, 
Gee, you've been gone for like 1,468 days. <laughs> yeah, been? It, it, it's been like seven or eight years, so. Yeah. It's like all the, all the animals have eaten each other. Like, <clears throat> we didn't know what to do when you were gone. <laughs> anyway, uh, probably one of the, one of the worst named RPGs ever is coming to the North America. It's called Bravely Default, whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> coming out in, uh, 2014, coming to 3DS. You know what's funny is that it actually looks pretty cool. Oh yeah, it looks amazing. But, uh, <laughs> that's, an, that's an awful name. It's yeah, called, it something's it's, gotta be done about that. The full name, name is Brave, Bravely Default. Colon flying fairy, because that made you want to buy oh. it. Because <laughs> that really helps. Jeez, I mean, that sounds... makes sense. Ah, uh, doesn't need to. It's Japanese. Sounds like the person who wrote it wanted to get beat up on a schoolyard. <laughs> I bet it sounds cooler in Japanese. It's like huda ga yo dubuda. You're like, oh, that sounds rad. What's it mean? Like flying fairy. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, Pikmin 3 dated August 4th. See, now there's a reason to go play your Wii U. Pikmin 3. Alright. Yeah. I am excited. I'm a Pikmin nerd. That is the entire reason I wanted a Wii U. Just for Pikmin. And it got oh, delayed yeah. like four times. You know what's funny? We were talking about Pikmin 3 back when the Wii just launched. We're like, oh, they'll finally make Pikmin 3. And then they never did. Nope. Motherfuckers. Anyway. Injustice Gods Among Us first DLC character is Lobo. One of because Lobos. people somehow care about Lobo? Fucking, I guess, dude. Like, I I think Lobo is the stupidest shit, but people like him. Yeah. I don't know, I wait, 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 wait. Did you show. just go through the Nintendo news and totally skip over the fact they're making a new Zelda for No, it's on 3DS? here. Okay. Yeah, I'll get we'll to get it. There. We'll get there. Don't worry about it. I wonder who they're going to announce next. Maybe yeah, the Lobo. He's probably going to cost five bucks when he comes out, and... Yeah. I want Martian Manhunter. Yes. A yeah, lot he's just still. standing in the background. Just standing watch in the background there. Like, like, not even helping. Uh, that or yeah, Miss Martian. Oh, I swamp know. Thing. The whole watchtower is under attack, and he's just yeah. standing there like, yeah. Mm-hmm. What about, I, I, would, I would actually prefer Miss Martian over, over Martian Manhunter. Swamp thing, swamp thing. Yeah, swamp like thing. my friend's been like, dude, put swamp thing up in this bitch. Like, <laughs> he gets dude, that'd be amazing. Him and Animal Man. That would be really cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Beast Boy. Yeah, Deadpool comes alive June twenty fifth. So this is the, yeah. um, this is the game by what are they called? High Moon Studios, the people yeah. who made Transformers: Fall and War of Cybertron, which I freaking loved. Um. This game should be pretty cool. I I know nothing. I've never read a Deadpool comic in my life, but uh, I hear they are pretty funny. And yeah, Nolan North like is rip, doing the voice again. It's a ripoff of uh, Deathstroke. Yeah, but he's ridiculous. <clears throat> Deathstroke's like and he's actually totally self aware. Yeah, it, like uh, Deathstroke is a serious character, and Deadpool's just like not not. <laughs> he's a merc he's... with a mouth. That's Deadpool, right? Yeah. Yeah. I hope it does well. It probably will do well with the fans, but Heimann just had a bunch of layoffs not too yeah, long ago. Yeah, but uh, it could be growing pains. Yeah. I'm a little worried because it's only $50. Is it really? Yeah. Mm. It might be it's... an experiment. Mm. To see if they could, how many more games they saw. I remember THQ said that, uh, <laughs> and they never did this, bastards. But they sold like one of their games for forty dollars. It sold. Like, it started off sixty, didn't sell much. They put it to forty, and it sold way more. So they were like, "We're gonna make all our games forty dollars now," and they never did that. And then look what happened to them. Maybe should have. Yeah, maybe that could have saved them. They probably could have. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, the price, the current pricing model in the industry is just a mess. That's why pay what you want, and uh, all the Steam sales do so well. It's just. Yeah. So things need to change. Yeah, yeah Cliffy well, B said of... a while back uh, that if games, if uh, games this generation were like twenty dollars, they'd be making more money. Yeah, probably. They probably have a lot less theft too, because it's like, what's twenty dollars? Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of like we were talking to. About, I was happy that Star Trek was in Redbox because I'm not sold on the game. I'm reviewing it, but I don't want to pay sixty dollars. And that. that would go even if I wasn't reviewing it. I was. I am interested in it. But I'm not. 
a hundred percent sold on it, you know, and I wouldn't want to shell out sixty bucks. Luckily, it's in Redbox, yeah. so I'll be able to test it out first. But if it wasn't, you know, that's that that'd be just tough beans. I gotta go. I gotta pay sixty bucks for it, and that's rough. Ugh. Yeah. Okay. So this is probably the biggest news. Um, Zelda: A Link to the Past two. For the three yes. DS. Yeah. Sounds pretty cool, actually. Uh, it better be. It's an old okay, school. Okay, so this like, is not a remake. I mean, no, it's no, not no. Like it's just, it's like a sequel. Yeah, um, it's, okay. it's in the same world, but it's not the same game. Yeah. Okay. So and it's gonna uh, be more than Force or whatever Four Swords Adventures was on the GBA. Yeah. It's hmm. uh, it's top down. It's 3D, but it's top down uh, like old school Zelda. It's got the hearts and everything. Yeah. It looks pretty cool. Looks pretty. Don't uh, screw this up. Yeah, like everything is... else, Nintendo. Or else Chris will Do find not it. ruin the best Zelda game ever created. Yeah. Let's go. And then the, I think this is the last Nintendo news. 3DS mm. XL Circle Pad Pro on sale through the Nintendo Store. Ships April 19th. That's that thing that's like, oh shit, we probably should have put a second stick on this motherfucker. Huh? Like, you can come buy this thing. <laughs> $20, you get another stick, and it makes your 3DS look even more bulky. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Go buy yeah. that, I guess. Uh, this one's weird. Uh, <laughs> this is a rumor, <laughs> though. Microsoft wants to resurrect Heroes as an original Xbox show. That's right. I did what? see that. I didn't read it, but I saw it. No, don't do that. They're going to be like, season two and three never happened. Then it would be okay. Yeah, exactly. Don't do that. Just so don't. pick up after season one. Yeah. I didn't even like season one that much, but... So I'm get, two I'm and getting, three were I'm worse. The vibe of you didn't really like the show at all. No, I didn't. That's why I'm telling them not to do it. This guy, I don't care. I don't give a fuck anyway. Um, it had potential, but it, I just, uh, I, I couldn't be bothered to watch it. Brutal Legend items now available in Team Fortress Two. Um, That's cute. I actually yeah. mean that. I, lo- I love Brutal Legend, even though yeah. it was. Uh, if you years. pre-ordered Brutal Legend PC, you got the items, but mm-hmm. uh, they're selling them in the store now. However, for uh, Steam Trade and TF2 Connoisseurs, the people who pre-ordered it have genuine ones, while all the other ones will just be uniques. And genuines, of course, worth more money to a collector. Yeah, my friend has a genuine bill hat, and people yeah, dude, those are worth, all the time. Those are worth, like, at least... 20 bucks. 80. It's 80 right now. God damn. Yeah. People bug him for it all the time, and every now and then, you know, he's thinking about it, and then he's like, nah. I, uh, he, he'd rather see people, like, kind of squirm over it. Yeah. I have a, uh, alright, I had a Dota 2 item that I traded, and I got 14 keys for it. Mm. That was some shit. I don't even know what that means. The keys and in, in like <laughs> I don't play Dota two. Well, okay, so I don't even know what that means. Never you know, in it. Team Fortress two, how you can buy keys for crates. Oh, okay. Same thing in Dota. You buy you can buy keys for these treasure chests, and there's items in them. And there's yeah, okay. certain items that are really rare, and you can only get them out of chests. So yeah, like, okay. yeah. Uh, Star Trek Online does the same thing. Yeah. So they're worth like a lot of they're worth like a lot of money if you can get them. And uh, I actually uh, got, there's a specific crate in Team Fortress, it does not drop very often, it's called a salvaged crate, and the crate itself is worth, like, 40 bucks. Well, so, snap, I need to play more TF2. Yeah, I got, I got $30 for it, and then I spent the $30 on, on Bioshock, like, it was $30 on my Steam wallet, so I got Bioshock Infinite, it only cost me $30, and I got all the pre-order bonuses, too. This is why I play a lot of uh, Valve games. <laughs> and our last piece of news, uh, report the Horror of the Orient development team, which is uh, Team Beyondy, facing studio layoffs. They don't know if they're going to be able to go on, which is really sad. Because I thought they were done. Yeah, I, I thought, they were I thought the done. L.A. Noir thing ended them. I thought they were finished. No, apparently not all of them. I guess somehow they managed to eke along. Yeah, and they were working on Horror of the Orient. And mm. uh, apparently they uh, 
being laid off by Kennedy Mitchell Miller, which is like some fucking company, I guess, that owns them. Uh, we'll see. It said that, uh, rumors suggest that the earliest we'll see it is 2015. So, <clears throat> don't hold on to your hats for that one. Mm. Don't hold your breath. Anyway, that's it for the news. I, I don't, I didn't even put out for questions, so I don't think we, we don't have any. <laughs> Unless you guys did. Oh, I didn't. Well. I don't think I have anything. That's, that's all of that. I have to go eat anyway, because I have to work in like 40 minutes, and I need to like have something in my stomach first. So anyway, this has been the VGU TV GamerCast. And, uh, you can come to VGU TV. Got lots of news. Got, well, I don't have news anymore. We got lots of cool <laughs> articles. We got, uh, reviews, videos, podcasts like this. Uh, you can find us all on Twitter at VGU TV. And, uh, uh, come watch Chris's live streams. Yeah. Tuesday and Thursday. Please, somebody watch them. Yeah. I, I did good today. I did good. I got, I got two really lucky hits with my artillery in World of Tanks. There you go. Awesome. Really lucky, like back to back, and then some guy came up and shot me in the butt. But mm-hmm. it we happens. Did, uh... Tanks have butts. Yeah, that's the, probably the worst place to get shot. I would <laughs> love to do some more Dota ones because Scott and I did one for Dota Two and had a lot of fun. And uh <clears throat> yeah, that's it for the show. See you guys next time. Right. Later. Bye bye. Adios. <laughs>